This is Radio Bath. You're listening to Radio Bath. My name's Nigel Fryat, and this morning I'm standing in for Steve Fountain, and we've been having a wonderful discussion about the arts, I feel, this morning. I'm joined in the studio today by uh, local theatre director Nicholas Aura, and we've just caught up with uh, Anna Serato from Mimosa, I think, Nick. I mean, I, I know you were listening. I, I'm, yeah. I, I think that was so important for emerging in, and particularly young performers to hear, but, you know, for everyone, actually, because it's, it's an incredibly difficult time, and Anna's positivity was incredible absolutely yeah. incredible yeah and she is right that there's where performance and uh, live events and all of that is it will come back and actually you could you can hold look everything look at everything in a slightly different way now in that we've had to adapt to being more online and more video based and all of that stuff and that mm. actually will now we can add that within new performance and create new things and it's it's actually developed new conversations and things so it's just about waiting for when the opportunity for you to be out and live with an added element of it can actually now be live streamed for an even larger audience. Yeah. We've got that capability and knowledge now, which is actually, it's quite uplifting and, and positive. I think, um, I don't know what your perspective is on this, but I've, I've always felt like theatre's had a almost tricky relationship almost with technology and that it's only just beginning to really find its way with how it engages with, uh, did you know, within, within the, within the study of the academic world, you know, we talk about intertextuality mm. and things like that, but, um, I've seen a couple of performances where I almost felt like technology was on stage just to have technology on stage, really. Whereas, and I've seen some incredible performances as well. Whereas now, I feel like there's a space opening up where technology can be used for for what it's it should be used for, which is to make our lives easier, in my perspective, and yeah. to improve work rather than it it being this cool thing that we we put on stage just just for the sake of it. But um, Nick. We are now going to work with a soliloquy, and you're going to be doing some performance, am I right? I'm going to do a bit of performance again, yeah. Yeah? Uh, so we're going to look at, um, so from Henry V, um, we got, well, King Henry V at that point, uh, also known as Prince Hal. Um, he did, he's got a monologue, uh, well, a soliloquy called Once More Into the Breach. Um, and I think what's quite, we've talked about what rehearsal is and how actors can develop a performance and stuff. There's a whole other element that a director deals with, and it's going back to those designers and um, how sound design can really change a performance or a context, putting um, a monologue in a different context can really change the meaning of it. Um, so I was thinking what we could do is I could give um, this a general a general performance um, breaking down uh, breaking it down and then going into what happens if you add um, a soundscape to that and seeing how it can change can, can change the performance and the feeling of it. Um, so the idea being that it's not all about the performer. It's not all about what the performer is saying. Yeah. We now start to create new meaning and understanding through yeah. layering things in. Yeah, we're developing okay. a world. Um, that's 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 what the director's job is, and that's all what we need to do for for an audience. Okay, great. And all these different um, ways of doing that through lighting, through sound, through projection, all of those things. Okay, let's have a play. So, yeah. how did you want to approach it? Do you want to do a read of? It first without any music, or do you want to dive straight in? Oh, how do you want to approach I'll, it? I'll, I'll give it um, a read without, yeah, um, and then we can little have a little chat about it, and then we'll try it one more time um, with with that added element of music into it. Great, wonderful, mate. amazing. Okay. Once more into the breach, dear friends. Once more, or close the wall up with our English dead. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard, favoured rage. Then lend the eye a terrible aspect. Let it pry through the portage of the head, like the brass cannon let the brow o'erwhelm it, as fearfully as doth a gallid rock. O'er oh, hang and jutty, his confounded base, swilled with the wild and wasteful ocean. Now... Set the teeth and stretch the nostril wide. Hold hard the breath and bend up every spirit to his full height. On, on, you noblest English, whose blood is fed from fathers of warproof. Fathers that, like so many Alexanders, had have in these parts from morn till even fought and sheathed their swords for lack of argument. Dishonour not your mothers, 
now attest that those whom you called fathers did beget you. Be copy now to men of grosser blood and teach them how to war. And you, good yeoman, whose limbs were made in England, show us the metal of your pasture. Let us hear that you are worth your breeding, which I doubt not, for there is none of you so mean and base that hath not noble lustre in your eyes. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start. The game's afoot. Follow your spirit, and upon this charge cry God for Harry, England, and St. George. Wow. That was incredible. I was just sitting the whole time, I'm just sitting here just watching you. I mean, there's so much, uh, and and that's so different as well to the, um, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? (laughs) It's it's a completely different context. Completely different context. (laughs) But what is the context of that monologue, Nick? Because there's obviously a lot of passion there. You know, there's a lot of big things being discussed Mm. and a lot of courage, passion. So so what's what's that monologue all about? So they're going in for a second wave against the French. Yeah. Um, And they're not doing too well, but Henry's saying if we come together, we can and we can use our English spirit and get through this final war. Um, If we don't do this, we're just going to be surrounded by our our dead friends um, and friends and colleagues of of, of the army. So Mm. um, that essentially is the context. Um, And talking of context, what I love about Shakespeare is you can put it into so many multiple different places and it can still make sense so in my head when i was thinking about this on the way in this morning was imagine that in the context of a black friday sale <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like yeah. completely go forth yeah, yeah, yeah come yeah, on guys yeah. we can do this once more into the breach <laughs> once more into the breach yeah. go and set that anger be, act like that tiger you will get that discounted tv <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, the, yeah. and that's the love of it is that naturally you go it's about war it's about coming together and it's about fighting for our for our cause but you can put that in different contexts. And, and that's why it can, it, it can be relatable to, to anyone, yes. right? Because any, any art, mm. okay, that we try and find meaning in, whether you're looking at the, the intention of the author, if you're looking at a painting, you're trying to work out the meaning, you know, we often hear painters laughing mm. at analysis of their work <laughs> yeah. because they're like, well, actually, I, I just flicked a bit of paint on there and it's, it's completely meaningless. And it's not to say <laughs> that there is no meaning in art because there's incredible amounts, but... What I'm getting at is that, that really it is about the person listening and their response to the piece of work. And yeah. if you put it in the context of Black Friday, <laughs> <laughs> that's something relatable. People can understand that. Anyone can understand that. Do you feel like Shakespeare needs to be put in different contexts in modern times? Can it, is it, can it, can it sit on its own uh, in the performance style of, say, like the Globe, for example? Yeah. Because there is a kind of split in the way that Shakespeare's performed at the moment, isn't there? There's... Well, I think because the beauty of it is it can it can be put into different contexts, different forms, different disciplines can use that those those texts in different ways. So why why not do that? Mm, and mm. the Globe are fantastic at doing very true to traditional ways and using um, only um, instruments from the time, only using costumes of the time and making it very true and. Um, but you can take it and put it in a film and um, do a complete revamped ver- version of it, it being just dance. Like yeah. it's, it's able to do that, and it's it's because it's about story um, and has the ability to be transformed in different ways. So as it can do that, why why wouldn't people do that? Because it is so can be so relatable. Just play. It yeah. just comes down to play, right? Yeah. That's, that's what I take away from yeah. it. I suppose. And we all have different experiences, and that's why we see things slightly differently. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Mm. How are we how are we going to work with this further then, this piece then, Nick? What would you like to do with it? So I think what'd be quite interesting is if we um I think if we do a, a little search of kind of epic dramatic music and um Epic Dramatic. Yeah? Epic, epic dramatic. Yeah. And this is this is what rehearsal's about. It's about playing, going, what could work? Um and as a director, I could uh, take an, an example song, send, give it to a sound designer and go, "We want this is the sort of feel. It's like putting a place marker in a f- soundtrack for a film before yeah. the sound score is done. Let's, uh, let's just play with something and see, see what happens and um, kind of go along with it. And, okay. it, and it, it will add a whole another dimension to it. Well, I'm going to load up. Um, I've got something here. Okay. So should we just, should we just give it a go? <laughs> yeah, we'll see, what, see what happens and I'll, I'll slightly improvise. <laughs> <laughs> That's the play, isn't it? Let's yeah, give it a go. Yeah. yeah. Want 
once more and to the breach, dear friends, once more. Or close the wall up with our English dead. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard-favoured rage, then lend the eye a terrible aspect. Let pry through the portage of the head like the brass cannon, let the brow overwhelm it. As fearfully as doth a gallid rock, o'erhang and jutty his confounded base, swilled with the wild and wasteful ocean. Now, set the teeth and stretch the nostril wide. Hold hard the breath and bend up every spirit to his full height. On, on, you noblest English, whose blood is fed from fathers of warproof. Fathers that, like so many Alexanders, have in these parts from morn till even fought and sheathed their swords for lack of argument. Dishonor not your mothers. Now attest that those whom you called fathers did beget you. Be copy now to men of grosser blood and teach them how to war. And you, good yeoman, whose limbs were made in England, show us here the metal of your pasture. Let us hear that you are worth your breeding, which I doubt not. For there is none of you so mean and base that hath not noble luster in your eyes. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start. The game's afoot. Follow your spirit, and upon this charge cry, God for Harry, England, and St. George! I mean, wow. That's... Wow. Hilarious. That was... <laughs> really? I was sitting here, <laughs> and I was... That was incredible just adding <laughs> just in adding that music underneath which we just found randomly yeah. but just something a bit epic right it, it suddenly um it took me there it mm. took me there and it's a combination of your talent and your and i love the way you handle the words I, it's i think it's incredible but having that underneath it as well we've suddenly created a whole world yeah it, it, it creates you can you can picture something slightly easier with just a soundtrack it's really peculiar so there's i you can see you're creating his own story in your mind even if you don't know the context of henry v so i think it's incredible that using these different art forms together and actually goes back to how if we look back at covid and everything that it's allowed us to adapt to and to learn new skills doing we're only going to be able to do new art and create new things like in the future when we're able to go back into a room again Absolutely. And I mean, that's a key point there. So at the moment, a key part of, of why it might be difficult for new art to be formed right now, although um, I will be going over a few yeah. a few things that are happening in, at the moment, is yeah. simply because we just can't bring people together at the moment. It's it's too difficult, yeah. It's, it's too difficult, and there are some capacities where you do need a large audience for that to for that medium to work Mm. and um it's just waiting for that time to do that but then new versions of different things can happen um and we're all adaptable and it kind of we're creative problem solvers creative problem solvers (laughs) that's what we're doing yeah (laughs) do you um do you find it difficult as a director to be performing so I know that's a, it might be a strange question, but in my mm. mind, do you as you're as you're running through that as you're were you you're listening to the music then? Obviously, I was I was teching for that. So yeah. you've obviously had some thoughts. You're like Nigel, turn it up, turn it down. <laughs> you know, are, you, are you monitoring like um, a director who's going on, or do you just flick straight into performance mode and that's it? You're focused on perf- what? How does that work? Um, I think the I'm so informed as a director on my training as an actor, and um, it's really holding back on delivering a performance within a rehearsal room that's not the director's job it's about finding a performance within an actor Mm -hmm. Um, but it's using the vocabulary that you know and understand as an actor to create performance as a uh, within uh, being the director's role Um, I don't I wouldn't say I find it particularly hard to switch Um, what I do is critically analyse myself afterwards Um, in the moment it's about trying to and all I was doing was listening to the music and um, I so it amazes me every time I do that exercise and going, the music just slightly dipped at that point and it was a more intimate line mm, mm. and then it's building up again and it's it's, re- it's reacting and that's what acting is. is Another word for reacting is reacting. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And I think you touched on something really important there and um, it's something that I, th- I, I feel has, has, has border pilled outside of the arts, but the idea of just being present, yeah. quite simply, just mm-hmm. being present. And I, one, of the, one of the things I will say um, about actor training... I feel is is that I hear lots of, of of discussions at the moment about how we might find presence, what we should be doing. But actually, I feel like actor training pretty much prepares you for 
being a person who's extremely present in the moment. I don't know how, how you feel about that. Yeah, definitely. We're all about... Um, we're quite... A- actors and performance and creators, we're very emotive and we're very empathic um, generally. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there are people that aren't. Um, <laughs> yeah, because we're all but different. Like, but yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd say, and it's a generalisation, I'd say we're pretty very uh, empathic in in how we are as human beings. And um, it's a ball of, we're trained to be receptive and to get like to react to different stimulus and things like that so yeah 100 percent. i definitely think we're we are yeah great stuff great stuff well nick um you're not going anywhere i hope are you no no, no. <laughs> sitting there um we're gonna gonna be catching up next with uh some mailing from some mailing vintage um after some music because i'll be honest that was incredible <laughs> and i need a bit of time to reflect on that i think and i hope um you at home en- enjoyed that and mm. And have kind of understood a bit more about how how performance can be can be brought to life. And uh, Nick, you know, would you be interested in in doing radio performance? Is that is this a medium? Because it's only something that we've yeah. really kind of stumbled across today that you might be able to even uh, something that's not so polished, but you might be able to put something out over radio, you know, quite easily as a I, director. Is that something you're? I think that's something definitely I'm interested in doing. Um, and it's very much it's, it's actually I've only ever th- thought about this this soliloquy that that I did in on a stage, and that's a completely different, like completely different to doing it onto radio because I only have to talk so quietly and everyone can hear it. Whereas in the <laughs> yeah, theatre, yeah. I have to I'd have to project. So yeah, it's um, I'm very much interested in doing something like that. It'd be awesome. Okay, cool. Well, we'll we'll have a look at that. Yeah. Um, up next, we've got Paint Me Silver by Pond. <laughs> 